This video has been classified as M. It is recommended for people aged 15 years and over. Tonight, we can reveal that Kerry Ann Kennelly will win Dancing with the Stars, and we'll tell you why shortly. But if you thought this was a fair competition based on dancing talent and your votes, think again. Dancing with the Stars is a con, and Channel 7 is playing you for a fool. Channel 9's a current affair getting stuck into the really important issues and getting them wrong. Kerry Ann was dropped from Dancing with the Stars last night. Welcome to BD Watch. I'm Jonathan Holmes. Mind you, ACA's tendency to run knocking items about shows on Channel 7 hasn't been much in evidence recently. It's been too busy bringing us the goss about Nine's own huge hit. This is no young talent time. Last night, a peak of nearly 5 million viewers were watching The Voice. <laughs> And a current affair has been cashing in on it again. Well, if you had any doubt that The Voice is all about the voices. And again. But first, The Voice steps up a gear next week when the coaches start to work some magic with their teams. And again and again and again and again and again. Well, now to The Voice and another big night as the battle rounds get underway. But first to The Voice and the fallout continues following the shock departure of Mahalia Barnes. Now to the tricky pop song that brought two contestants undone last night on The Voice. Well, it's the final crucial battle round. In the past five weeks, a current affair has run no fewer than 16 items about The Voice. Around three a week. How can today tonight possibly compete with that? Uh, well, it's been following that old adage, if you can't beat them, knock them. That song, Natural Woman, it's one of the greatest songs of all time because they have events in them. I found it extremely patronising. Mm. I have heard his album and there are no events in that album. Last night, the battleground turned ugly, not for the contestants, but for the show's credibility. Well, it's all part of the game these programmes play. Better than another diet item, I reckon. And now that The Voice is down to one show a week, maybe the ACATT war will move on to other issues, like, um, well, like a current affair dissing Seven's programmes again. Forget the price is right, this is The Price is Tight. They're not going to win a million bucks, they're going to win 20 if they're lucky. And as you're about to see, Channel 7 has been caught out playing you for a fool. Which is exactly where we came in, remember? Dancing with the Stars is a con, and Channel 7 is playing you for a fool. Media watching is good fun, isn't it? But The Australian takes it a stage further. It's taken to watching Media Watch. Media Watch eyes climate death threat claims. After triggering a global news event with reports about death threats against climate scientists, the ABC and Fairfax Media are under investigation by Media Watch after a central plank supporting their reports was found to be non-existent. Well, we have looked into all this and what a mess it is. One news outlet comes out of it, in our opinion, almost unscathed, Fairfax Media's The Canberra Times. The ABC doesn't look so great and The Australian looks worst of all. Let's begin at the beginning, the 4th of June last year, and this story on the front page of the Canberra Times. Climate of fear. Australia's leading climate change scientists are being targeted by a vicious, unrelenting email campaign that has resulted in police investigations of death threats. The Australian National University has confirmed it moved several high-profile climate scientists, economists and policy researchers into more secure buildings following explicit threats to their personal safety. The story by Rosalind Beebe didn't specify when that had happened. Perhaps it should have done because the move had occurred 16 months earlier, in February 2010. But Beebe's report didn't focus particularly on the ANU. She'd gone a lot further afield. More than 30 researchers across Australia told the Canberra Times they are receiving a stream of abusive emails threatening violence, sexual assault, public smear campaigns and attacks on family members. 
But the story quoted only one scientist talking about death threats. He was advised by police to install a panic button security alarm in his university office after receiving death threats. That scientist was not at the Australian National University. However, that day the ABC followed up the story. Several top climate change scientists in Canberra have been moved to a more secure location after receiving death threats over their research. The ABC also failed to mention that the move had happened well over a year earlier. As for death threats at ANU, where did that come from? Not from the Canberra Times. Perhaps from the ANU's Vice-Chancellor. ABC Online reported that morning. Vice-Chancellor Professor Ian Young says the scientists have received large numbers of emails, including death threats and abusive phone calls. He says it has been happening for the past six months and the situation has worsened significantly in recent weeks. The unedited radio interview on which that report seems to have been based is no longer in the ABC system. Professor Young now points out to Media Watch that unlike other parts of the ABC online article, those sentences aren't in quotation marks. I stand firmly by my quoted comments, but cannot recall exactly what I said outside those quoted comments and am thus unable to venture an opinion on whether I was accurately paraphrased in the ABC report or not. However, it seems to have been because of those ABC reports that an enterprising blogger called Simon Turnill put in a freedom of information request for... Emails, transcripts of telephone calls or messages that contain abuse, threats to kill and or threats of harm to the recipient. That were sent to six researchers in the ANU's Climate Change Institute... Within the last six months. It took nearly a year and an appeal to the Privacy Commissioner before 11 emails were released. In explaining his decision, the Privacy Commissioner found that... Ten of the emails do not contain threats to kill or threats of harm. These documents contain abuse in the sense that they contain insulting and offensive language. And the meaning of the 11th is now controversial. For more on that, see our website. Suffice to say, it may not describe a threat at all. The reporting of the email's release is certainly instructive. The ABC Online had this. The Australian National University has released a series of abusive and threatening emails which were sent to its climate change scientists. That story makes much of the 11th email without explaining its ambiguity. It doesn't mention that the other 10 do not contain threats of physical harm, let alone death. It doesn't correct or clarify its reporting about death threats last year. ABC News tells Media Watch that it's not aware of any material facts in its reporting that require correction or clarification. Well, remember, the ABC reported Ian Young as saying last June that the scientists have received large numbers of emails, including death threats and abusive phone calls. He says it has been happening for the past six months. There may well have been emails sent to other scientists at ANU. Still, the 11 that have been released do seem to suggest that either Professor Young was misreported or he himself was mistaken about the extent of the threat. Clarification by the ABC would surely be a good idea. But what the emails don't prove is what the Australian splashed on its front page on May the 3rd. Climate scientists' claims of email death threats go up in smoke. Exclusive. Christian Kerr claims that some of Australia's leading climate change scientists were subjected to death threats as part of a vicious and unrelenting email campaign have been debunked by the Privacy Commissioner. 11 emails to six scientists in one university in one six-month period. How on earth do they debunk the Canberra Times' story? About a week later, legal affairs editor Chris Merritt reported that Media Watch was investigating the Australians' rivals. The Canberra Times published the first news of death threats against climate scientists in June last year. It said the problem was not confined to the ANU and that academics elsewhere were at risk. The credibility of the rest of the Canberra Times' allegations is yet to be tested, but the paper's reporting concerning death threats at ANU is in tatters, as are the associated reports by the ABC. But hang on. The Canberra Times article did not report that death threats had been made to academics at the ANU. And the Australian has never made clear that the emails released under FOI 
covered a period a year after the ANU scientists had been moved to a safer location. In fact, Christian Kerr's report thoroughly confused the issue. Chief Scientist Ian Chubb, who was the ANU's Vice-Chancellor at the time, last night admitted he did not have any recollection of reading the emails before relocating the university's researchers. At what time, Christian? Professor Chubb was Vice-Chancellor at the time the scientists were moved, but he couldn't have read the emails before that because they weren't sent until the following year. Besides, if the Australian had talked to the Climate Change Institute's Will Steffen, he might have told it what he told us, that abusive emails were not the main reason for the move. We were moved after two threatening incidents. Both events, in late 2009 and early 2010, involved visitors coming unannounced into our offices and taking or threatening aggressive actions against me and another academic associated with the Climate Change Institute. But the most absurd aspect of the Australian's reporting is its claim that these 11 emails on their own debunk claims that some of Australia's leading climate change scientists were subjected to death threats as part of a vicious and unrelenting email campaign. A warning, there's bad language coming. The Australian could have checked the hard copy of the Canberra Times' original article in June last year. You will be chased down the street with burning stakes and hung from your f***ing neck until you are dead, dead, dead! Die, you lying bastard! F*** off, you lying communist Eat and die! Or even better, the Oz could have actually gone to climate scientists around the country and asked for examples of threatening and abusive emails. That's what we did. We got these from just two scientists, one in Melbourne, one in Brisbane, received in that same six-month period. They're on our website. They're not pretty reading, and yes, they were reported to police. But all, according to The Australian, debunked. As a viewer wrote to Media Watch, It's astonishing that a serious newspaper company would be so flippant about threats and abuse directed at ordinary people just for doing their job. Last week, as we normally do, we sent some questions to the Australian. It decided, as it sometimes does, that the best form of defence is preemptive attack. In a news story on Saturday... ABC Climate Change Reporting called into question. Jonathan Holmes, ABC Group Think. And then in an editorial this morning. Media Watch should be subject to its own critical scrutiny. You can read both on our website. Maybe the Australian will provide me with space to respond on its own pages. I don't want to take up your time with disputes about who are and who aren't, in the Australian's bizarre words. Closed-minded thinkers and zealots, impervious to fact. Suffice to say in that phrase beloved by journos, that Media Watch stands by its stories, tonight's included. Until next week, good night.